All right, guys, in today's video, we're going to talk about the topic of why do you look the way you do and why do you have the certain traits that you do, like your blood type or predispositions to certain diseases, hair texture, height, all of these different traits fall under the category of inheritance, genetic factors that you might have gotten from your biological parents. Now, the environment does play a role in how you end up looking, behaving, acting, etc. Okay, but your genes also play a giant role. Okay, so in order to understand this question, we have to go back to that beautiful union between the sperm and the egg. Okay, so as the sperm meets the egg, their chromosomes, their DNA combines to form the zygote, the beginning embryo. And the interaction between those chromosomes determines all of your traits or all of your genetic traits, okay? So in order to understand how these genes on these chromosomes interact to give you the traits that you have, we have to go back to a little known plant that some of you might like eating, some of you might not like eating, the humble and underrated pea plant, okay? So there was this guy in the 1800s called Gregor, Gregor Mendel, and Gregor, he was raised in a poor family, and back in the 1800s, if you wanted to get an education, one of the easiest ways to do that was to join the monastery. Okay, so he joined the monastery. He was a monk, and he became the gardener at the monastery, and as he became, as he read different articles and learned things and did all the gardening, he noticed differences between plants, particularly in the pea plants. Okay, and he is also known as the father of modern genetics. He studied peas for over a decade, making really meticulous notes about all of the different changes that he saw, all of the different traits that he saw. And he chose peas for a few different reasons, okay? So peas are cheap, they grow very fast, they are easy to manipulate during reproduction. You can take pollen from one plant and put it in the flower of a different plant, and boom, you're going to make some babies between those two plants. It's easy to tell if you isolate them and are careful with how you reproduce the peas, what the parents of those peas would be, okay? Peas also have a lot of different traits that he could examine. So what he did is he basically selected a trait, say flower color, and he bred peas with white flowers together until they only produced peas with white flowers. Or he bred peas with purple flowers together until they only produced peas with violet purple flowers. Okay, so that's what it called a pea line, kind of like in dogs, how there are pedigrees of like pure breed dogs. Same concept, but for pea plants. So he basically chose a trait bred them until they were pure breeding, and then he bred them to each other to observe how those traits were inherited. Okay, so for example, when he bred purple with white flowers, he asked the question of what would happen, okay? So for example, if you look at flower color, he pollinated a purple flower with a white flower. What would you expect the resulting flowers to look like? You might think that they would be pink, but he actually found that all of the flowers that resulted had purple flowers. So all of those pea plants in that first generation, the F1 generation, had purple flowers. So then he thought, well, what if I take those offspring and I breed them with each other? I self-pollinate those. Okay, so he took the F1 generation, these purple hybrids, and when he bred those with each other, the F2 generation had offspring with a three to one ratio. So some of them were purple and some of them were white. Huh, okay. So this pattern he saw in multiple different traits in the pea plants, in height, in seed color, in seed texture, a lot of different traits. So he had some takeaways. The first takeaway was that individuals must inherit factors from parents, meaning a factor that influences the color of the flower. Okay, These factors are passed from one generation to the next because even though F1, that first generation, was all purple, F2, they must have carried that white color factor because some of the flowers ended up being white in F2. 
Okay. And then the factors, again, may be passed along, but may not even show up. So for example, green and yellow, the F1, there's no green, but in F2, the green shows up again. So why is that the case? Okay. Now, if you look again, all different traits show this pattern. First generation, one trait might mask or suppress the other trait. But in the next generation, that other trait might show up again. Okay, so we're going to talk about why this happens in class. Another takeaway is that the factors controlling different characteristics, for example, color of flower versus height or color of pod versus color of the seed, are inherited independently. So they don't impact other traits. So one trait might get passed on, but that doesn't mean the other trait is going to be passed on with it. Okay, we will talk about what this means in the case of your traits and actual genes tomorrow. Okay, so I'm going to leave you with a little Mendel joke. What did Gregor Mendel say when he founded genetics? Whoopee. All right, so we'll talk about this in class tomorrow. Make sure you've taken good notes on his findings.